Yo, this is the Arbiter Akitsu. It's a mouse that has carbon fiber as one of its material choices and weighs in at 38 grams. It is a collab with Vansel, which is a hit or miss in my personal experience. This mouse cost 140 US dollars, which is very expensive and is a miss for me, unfortunately. I'll get started with the shape. The shape is good. The hump leans towards the middle of the mouse, but it's low profile and relatively small in size, which makes it perfect for fingertip. You can also pull off a claw, but only for more aggressive styles as your fingers are already reaching the very front of the mouse, so you'll have to curl them up a bit. Still, it's not impossible to do, and the hump actually sits quite nicely and doesn't move around a lot, so that's great. The sides are pretty much flat apart from the back as it flares out a little bit. The flare is not exaggerated so overall you can grip wherever you prefer and the width of the mouse won't change too much. This is perfect for fingertip users again because the flat sides and similar width all around, the mouse is really versatile for finger placements and I can get a consistent grip regardless of where I hold it. The buttons themselves have very subtle comfort grooves which is completely fine. You can still click anywhere and it won't feel uncomfortable at all. Overall the shape is pretty spot on and surprisingly it reminds reminds me of a slightly boxy Final Mouse Ultralight. It kind of sits in between an X2 and Ultralight shape and I like it a lot. The coating is where my first problem of the mouse comes in. Long story short, it just doesn't feel nice. Carbon fiber is used, but the shell itself where you're making contact with is not fully carbon fiber. You can see it from the bottom of the mouse near the front part here. That's carbon fiber. It feels nice, very satisfying to touch. There's also a pretty cool dragonfly here, which is a nice design. The shell though feels far from it. In fact, I'm not even sure if there's any carbon fiber here. It just feels like a plastic shell that has no coating on it. It's got this matte feeling and is pretty rough. Along with the honeycomb design, this is pretty terrible to grip. I mean, it doesn't slide around or anything like that, but the grippiness of this is slightly above average at best. It also doesn't help that the plastic finish combined with the really lightweight makes this mouse feel a lot cheaper than it really is because the build quality is very solid. There's no creaks, no flexing anywhere, everything is high quality, but it just feels cheap in hand. Next up, the clicks. The Kitsu uses custom Huano Dragon Claw micro switches, which feel nice. I still prefer the blue shell pink dots more, but these are light. They're crispy and very tactile. I've had no problem spamming them, but they're not very consistent where clicking near the top of the mouse feels noticeably heavier. It's to the point where you might be using a lot more force to spam at the top versus near the bottom. Apart from that, I'd say the switches are really satisfying to use. The main buttons have no pre-travel but a decent amount of post. I think this really helped a lot with the bounciness of the switches and making them feel lighter than they really are and it's good. Side buttons feel dull to spam as they have very little pre-travel and no post-travel at all so it feels like you've hit a wall instantly the moment you press down on the side buttons. Scroll wheel is pretty stiff. The scrolls are very tactile and they feel nice but they're heavy. Same thing with clicking down on it, they just take a lot more force than I would have preferred. At least they're not super loose and low quality but this is a little too much for me. Now for the mouse gates, these are pretty average. They come with dot skates applied right out of the box and the last time a mouse had dots was the Beast X Mini which had a protective film on it. When I started using it, it felt super slow. The Akitsu also felt the same, but surprisingly, there was no protective film. It was just this slow. To be fair, there is a break-in period, which the skates no longer felt as sluggish, but quality-wise, they're still not great. The speed after the break-in period is balanced, and the smoothness is noticeably worse than other dot skates like the X-Ray Pad Jades or the Ghost Glides PTFE dots. Even on a relatively light texture pad like the Courage, you can still feel the skates being a tiny bit scratchy, so I would definitely swap them out for the best experience. The wireless implementation on the spouse supports up to 8K polling rate and everything is stored on board. You don't need to download any software to change your settings. Everything can be done with the two buttons at the bottom for DPI and polling rate and also a combination of the main and side buttons. The dongle they give you has an LED screen that will show live changes when you make them which is nice. However, the downside to this is that firmware updates must be done by downloading a separate file or program and running it instead of having everything built into the software. On other mice, updating the firmware is pretty simple. You just go to the update page and see if there's any available. With mice like this and the previous Final Mouse products, you will have to spend a little more effort to go to their website, find the file, download it, and run it to update. 1K, 2K, 4K, and 8K were generally fine, apart from the fact that my mouse will just randomly stop tracking at least once almost every day. Is it super bad? Not really, but it is annoying what it does happen, especially when every mice released right now have had good wireless performance with no stutters at all. So for a mouse that's 140 bucks, you would expect at least a stable connection. 
This could also very well be a copy to copy thing, so maybe I just got unlucky, but I hope they release an update to the firmware soon. Battery life on the other hand is average on 1K and 2K. I didn't notice that 4K and 8K tend to drain the battery a lot faster and I needed to charge it pretty much daily with 10 to 14 hours of usage. Okay, so that is the Arbiter Akitsu. Honestly, feels pretty disappointing because I was hyped about it and the mouse didn't match up to my expectations. However, even if I view it from an objective standpoint, this mouse still isn't worth 140 bucks because it just has too many aspects that are average. The only really good thing about this mouse was the shape and maybe the clicks. Rest is whatever and at this point you might as well get the ATK F1 Ultimate for $72 or the Extreme, they'll both be cheaper and you'll have an overall better mouse and experience using it than this. So yeah, that's it.